Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our IQ R&D room here. Today's video is going to be all about tool maintenance and keeping your tools up and running throughout the year. I'm here with Paul Goof, our CEO and inventor of all these beautiful orange tools. And he's here and he's going to help walk us through. So if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to message us on Facebook or Instagram or through Zoom. And we'll go ahead and answer those questions for you. But I'll let Paul just take it away here. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. We appreciate you taking a few minutes, learning a little bit more about IQ Power Tools and also how to maintenance your tool. It's very important to take care of your tools. And what we're going to talk about today is what you want to do kind of on a yearly basis. So we're coming into springtime here. You guys are going to be dusting the snow off of your machines and getting back to work. So uh, we're going to take a few minutes and go through what you want to do to uh, tune up your machines, kind of give them a once over and clean them. And then uh, you know, we also have some tune-up kits, uh, yearly tune-up kits that you can purchase that has all the parts and pieces you need to uh, refresh everything. So in a general sense, uh, kind of all the tools are the same. We're gonna kind of use the IQTS 244, our tile saw uh, and talk around it. But these same principles apply to the the 360 uh, XR or the XT, and we'll talk about the difference of those two, and also the IQ uh, uh, 362. So pretty much you're gonna be doing the same types of things. Primarily, you're gonna to wanna to change the filter, you're gonna to wanna to change the brushes on the motor, and you're gonna to wanna to change the louvers. Those are the really primarily the, the three things. Um, and of course, the only difference is the IQ 360 does not have the louvers. So in that case, in your tune-up kit, you're gonna get a bag for the, for the drum instead. So that will just be the difference. But you do wanna uh, change out the, the filter and also the brushes on the machine. So let's uh, talk about the, the machine in, as a whole. Um, of course, the louvers are a very important thing on the machine and you can see how the louvers work here. Now you can kind of look straight down the louvers and what's gonna happen is over time, this little slot that the blade is cutting into is gonna get wider and wider. And that's because the blade, as you cut, kind of deforms. And if you're, especially if you're really pushing hard, the blade deforms a little bit more and you have a wider slot. That's also particularly true with the 362 um, because it has a wider blade. So putting a fresh set of louvers in the table is very important. So let's go ahead and show you how you do that. So first you just wanna take your table off. You unclip it here, remove the table. And I'm gonna flip it over and set it right on the edge here. So here's our, get this out of the way. Here's our table. <clears throat> so here's the bottom of the table here. And you see the louvers have these, these little, tabs and I'm going to turn it around maybe you can kind of see the tab you see that little tab right there so each end of the louver set and that's that's the tab I'm talking about and that's the tab I'm talking about so each end of the louver set has a little tab and you just come in here and you pop it off the little keeper pop it off the little keeper and I'll do that three times three sets of louvers because there's three of them is there a specific order in which they're supposed to be put on there? No, it doesn't matter. I mean, there are uh, two different types of louvers, but so I've just released the tab. You see, there's the louvers that I just popped out of the table. So flipping the table back over, there are different louvers. Two of them are the same. So these two are the same. And then this is the back, the back louver. So it has just a, you kind of put them side by side. You see one is just a little bit shorter. And that's just the back louver, the, the starting louver. So we can pop those right back in. So just, just a very simple thing is you just line up the louvers with the table. You hear how they click in. The next set, you'd line those up, clicks in. Again, line those up, clicks right in. So that's how fast and easy it is to change the louvers. What happens if they don't use the louvers? If they don't use the louvers, um, 
the dust collection system is not going to work as well. Okay. It's good because the louvers are really channeling and focusing that uh, vacuum, you know, into the compartment that it needs, right where the blade is, right where the cutting's happening. If you don't have the louvers, then it's a much larger area, and so you're losing losing vacuum force. So, awesome. One other thing, while we're you know tuning up the table here, let's come back to the tile saw. Sometimes you know people will say, "Hey, the the table feels kind of chunky as it's as it's traveling through." Well, if you look at the side of the the table, these upper rollers are pushing down on the rails here. And so what happens is sometimes they pick up some chunks or little things that get on the top side. So we recommend just take a little bit of a scotch bright or something like that and take and clean that top surface. Should I use oil when I'm cleaning that off? No, no, you don't need to use any oil or anything. Just use some scotch bright, clean that top surface and you kind of run your finger across there to see if there's any chunks. Cause sometimes a little piece of debris or something gets on top of the wheel and then the wheel will push it up into the surface. If you do use oil, you're gonna catch a lot more debris and that's where it's gonna get even more, uh, more chunky. And then the bottom rail as well, you can clean that off, clean the bottom guide what, rail off. What about water? Should I use like a water spray to clean it all out or how should I, I clean out the you know residual dust all over the machine? You, you really should just kind of brush it off. Uh, you know, you could use another vacuum to kind of clean it off. So that's, uh, you know, you really don't want to add water to the mix because you got electrical components and things. But if you just use that Scotch-Brite, clean off the surface, put your table back on. Oh, we've got to cut our louvers again. So whenever you put uh, new louvers on, you have to cut them. So you got to keep that in mind. So. That's a great tip. We get a lot of that on Instagram and Facebook, and we have contractors who don't always put the head of the saw always, always down. So that's a great tip from Paul. Make sure that you are cutting those louvers all the way through on your very first cut. Yeah. So if you see these louvers just have kind of a notch, the, you know, the ones I just took out, which are not, these are not uh, worn too much, so they don't really need to be replaced. But you can see that's how the blade will cut down into the, the louvers there. So. All right, so that's the table tune-up, very simple. Um, now we'll go ahead and talk about the, uh, let's do the, the brushes next since we got the machine. So right here on the front and back of the motor, we have these little caps. So let's come around to the table here and we got a motor taken off here so we can see a little bit easier. So on the front and back side of the motor, we got these little caps. Inside those caps are the brushes. And those are the brushes right there. I'll pop some out here. You can get a little closer view, but very simple to change. So you wanna, in your tune-up kit, you'll get a set of brushes. You also get a filter and you, you also get the louver. So you'll have everything you need to do a complete tune-up. So here's the new brushes. Very simply, just take a screwdriver, take that cap, spin the cap out, pop the brush out. The brush you can see will wear, and you wanna, you can run these brushes up to, you know, the, probably about a, a quarter inch uh, of wear, and that would be it. I mean, you really wanna change it out at that point. Um, so you can uh, wanna make sure you have fresh brushes in there. Because if you run these things too long, what happens is there's some metal in here that can start pushing up against the commutator in there and then you start damaging components. So you don't wanna do that. So change the brushes every year and you'll never have to worry about it. So to put the brush back in, simply insert it and get your little spring hole down there. This is probably the most challenging part of the whole is holding it down and then getting your cap on top, slide it into place. But you're a pro, you got this. Yeah. What about the vacuum motor brushes? How often should we change those? And are they the same? Yeah, they're a little bit uh, different. And you know, you know, I would be looking at those about every two years. 
you can tighten those caps down. You don't need to over tighten them, just make them, you know, snug. And then of course you want to do the same thing on the backside. So you got two brushes for, for every motor. So it's as simple as that to change out your brushes. Perfect. And again, those are included in the annual tune-up kit as well. Yes. And we have a quick question from Instagram from Euro Tile Tech. Uh, the little mess sponge dust collector that sits behind the blade. Do we have those and are those included in the maintenance kit? No, those aren't included in the maintenance kit. We have replacement ones of those if you need them. Um, those can be popped out and, and cleaned. Those really should be cleaned a little bit more periodically. Uh, you know, and you can just take those out and you can wash them as long as you leave them overnight and you know, get the, make sure they're dry before you use the machine. Or you can just kind of knock the, the dust out of those, so. Great question. Okay, next, do you wanna talk about, um, we did louvers, we did the fil uh, we did brushes, so let's go ahead and talk filters. Yeah, so now we're gonna talk about the filter. Now just, so the filter, we're talking about this part, the filter is behind this cover. So we actually have a, a housing here to make it real easy to see. So again, very simple. Um, one thing you wanna keep in mind is, you know, this is the replacement filter. It comes in a box basically that looks like this. Also comes with these little tabs, which are the filter cleaning tab um, that you wanna change. When you get the filter, there's a little plastic screen on here and there should be some grease. You see that white lithium grease on there. That helps the filter spin nice and free on the spindle. So that's what you should get. And that comes all together in your box. One thing to talk about with filters, zoom out a little bit here and we can see kind of the difference. And we're talking specifically about the, the 360. Um, the 360, most of the, all the models up until the 360X use this filter right here. It's, it's an, basically an, uh, an eight inch diameter filter. When we went to the XT, we were able to engineer and put a little bit larger filter in it. So we're using this type of filter. So when you do order your tune-up kit, make sure if you have a 360 and you're ordering the kit for that, make sure you tell the person you need one for the 360 or the 360 XT. The XT is the one that will have the, the newer uh, filter. So, so that being said, let's take a filter out and do a quick change. So very simply, you got these five screws on here. You just wanna loosen all five of the screws. And like you said, this is pretty much the same for all our tools, even yeah. the vacuum or the new 228, correct? Yep, they all, they all run uh, kind of the same setup. So you take out these five screws and then basically you're just gonna pull that filter out of the housing, you know, with the knob on it. You're going to spin off the knob, pop that out grab your new filter and you just do it in reverse. You put the cap on it <clears throat> and spin the knob on there. So that's how you change the filter out. But now let's talk about the filter cleaning tab, which is right here. So you have a little bag that has your filter cleaning tab and that's what goes on the surface of the filter and is actually clicking it and cleaning the filter. So you want to change that because it can become worn out. So we'll try to look inside here, but if you get your manual out, you can really show a, uh, a good view of how to change this filter. There's the tab, I'm gonna spin this around. I don't know if you can see this or not. The tab it. is right here. So the tab is held in by a little retaining clip. So you push that clip back and you pop the tab right out and then you see it's like a little T there and you slide that T in and it'll clip right back in. Really simple to do. So, so then you would put your new tab in and then just insert your filter simply like that. Line up your holes. So if I think my filter is getting dirty, should I clean it or should I replace it? 
Well, you always need to be following the instructions to clean your filter, depending on your machine. So you're, you're spinning that once a day or you're spinning it every 30 minutes, depending on the machine you have. So make sure you're, you're spinning that filter often. You can't spin it enough uh, because that just cleans the filter and you know, rejuvenates your vacuum flow. So the biggest thing is if you start seeing dust go through and start coming out the vacuum side, that means your filter is done. It, you're, you're blowing dust right through the filter. That means it is definitely worn out. But if you're changing this on a yearly basis, then you, you won't have any problem with that. But I definitely shouldn't get like a water hose and try to clean it with soap and water. No, no, you definitely don't want to take your filter and clean it with a water hose or any or, you know, uh, compressed air because that's going to damage the filter as well. Um, you really, for the, during the year you use it, just spin that filter. That's all you need to do, keep it, keep it clean. So, so that's how you clean the filter. That's uh, uh, another pretty simple operation. Literally, it takes 15 or 20 minutes, um, you know, to make all these uh, refreshments or, you know, tune up your machine. So it, it's very quick and it's, it really keeps the tool uh, like fresh and like it was new. So we really encourage you guys to take that, uh, opportunity to buy the tune-up kits um you know they're they're coming as a kit and usually we have a promotion this type time of year that what do they get with a tune-up kit well well that promotion is still to be determined sorry guys we don't know if we're doing that but i do have a, something that we can show you is the saw covers okay so it's not part of the tune-up kit but be some promotion don't worry we'll, we'll take care of you <laughs> But if you want to demo this on the tile saw, since we have it right here, we can yeah. show everybody this new accessories that we're here to offer. So, so this is a new accessory. It's the, the tool cover. So basically it's a nice uh, tarp that you can put over your tool. Just like that. If you want to keep it out of the rain or if you're hauling it in the back of a pickup truck, it does have these nice grommets on here. So you just take a bungee wherever appropriate and kind of cinch you down and that uh, keeps your tool nice and covered. And it does fit the 244 and the larger MS-362, which is great. Yeah, so just those two machines, so. So I just want to remind you guys, if you are looking for these annual tune-up kits, the cost does vary depending on the tool just because of the different sizes of the brushes. They are around $100 uh, just to include all the parts. If you're looking for those, definitely give us a call at our IQ corporate or contact your dealer. I know we used to have them up on our website. Unfortunately, right now, our website is going through some changes. I'm working on upgrading that to make it more accessible to end users. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and give us a call, we can totally help you out. And we also have maintenance manuals that we can email you and help you out with. But for any questions, go ahead and call our team or call your dealer, and we'd be happy to help you guys. Yeah, and Sarah mentioned the manuals. I know... Uh people in general don't typically read the manuals, but I would encourage you guys to find your manual, read it, go to the maintenance section. There's some great, you know, pictures in there. Uh, we tried to spend a lot of time giving you some real valuable information. And if you go to your manual, it's going to answer a lot of questions. So keep it someplace and you can refer to it. It'll, it'll save you a lot of head scratching. So, yep. And then just so you guys know, we are going to be doing videos like this now every week for moving forward in the, in the future. So feel free to join us again next Thursday. Next Thursday will be around 10 o'clock. So follow us on social media for updates and we'll talk to you guys then. Thank you All guys right. so much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.